Welcome everyone to our special Zoom edition of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Uh, I'm uh, your co-host Keith Halperin. And, 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 I'm, and I'm Will Burnick. Excellent. Um, today um, our guests are from the ARC, uh, Krista Preston, who is the Associate Director of Employment Services, and um, Eric Harvey, Employment Services Manager. But before we get into our questions, Will, what's with your shirt today? This episode shirt is my Best Buddies Inclusion shirt. It represents inclusion and 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 work, teamwork in Best Buddies. For 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 three decades, Best Buddies have worked together and and been a team and and included everyone on on the spectrum to join us, to to jo to to participate and and help out in in the world. I'm in this in the Bay Area. Excellent. Uh, for our new vi viewers, uh, one of the organizations that we have close ties with is Best Buddies, of which Will has been along, and a number of our other Ascend members have been associated with for many years. Um, Segue into that, Will. Uh, would you like to uh, begin with our guests? Do you have questions for them? I sure do. The first one is for Krista. Do you have you worked personally with, with students with disabilities? Hi, Will. Thank you so much for that question. Um, for those of you who don't know you, don't know me, my name is Krista Preston. I'm the Associate Director of Employment Services at the ARC of San Francisco. Will, your question was, have I worked with, with people with special needs previously? Yes, like, like, just on a, on, like just like on a personal basis or in person. Yep. So um, I have a very close family member that has special needs. Um, so I've been part of the community my whole life. Uh, my father in the 70s actually started an ARC out in Pennsylvania. Um, prior to joining the ARC of San Francisco, I was actually teaching special education and working with a nonprofit um, actually based out of Uganda, East Africa. Um, and when I moved back to the U.S. two years ago, I was really excited to get back into this community um, and start working with the ARC. It has always been part of my life. Um, like I said, I have a very close family member. It is um, biologically my uncle, but he was raised in my house my entire life. Um, so it's just always, it, this has been my, my community and, and I've always been involved with it well before I was even born. Who is your inspiration to working in, to working with the art? Yeah, that's a great question actually, Will. So like I mentioned, I, I have a family member. So his name is Nick. And um, Nick had a lot of communication challenges. Um, he was communicative but nonverbal. And uh, that unfortunately led to a lot of assumptions about capabilities in life. So, uh, we even as a family, Nick went to school, um, he finished high school, but we as a family didn't really encourage him to go into uh, employment, to search for a job. We thought we as a family would, would manage that and he wouldn't have the financial need to work. So we would um, enroll him in day programs and activities, but we wouldn't encourage him to go into employment. And as he got older, I came to realize as a younger person in the home that employment really was a dream of his. It was something he really wanted to do in his life and we had actually prevented him from that. So we thought we were doing something grand saying, you don't have to work, we'll take care of you. Um, and really we robbed him of that opportunity and that has stuck with me my entire life. Um, and so about since I was 16 years old, working in employment services, specifically with the ARC has been my dream. Do you, do you still keep in touch with ARC clients during the pandemic? For sure. Um, I am not as in touch as I would like to be as uh, some of our job coaches are. Eric can definitely speak to that a lot more than I can. Um, I get to spend most of my time working with our managers and with the staff of the ARC. Um, which is great and I get to see at a high level all the progress that is happening, but unfortunately I don't get to have direct contact with many of the clients. 
Great. So Krista, uh, could you go into some detail about what pre-COVID uh, programs uh, that the ARC did as far as employment, and also what are the major changes that you've had to institute uh, as we're now in the uh, COVID uh, pandemic? Yeah, a lot of what the ARC did before was, we really called it our holistic approach to employment. So we would do, we would begin with to identify career goals mm -hmm. and then break those down into job goals. So as we all know, career is a, a long-term vision and there's many steps along the way. Um, once that first initial steps was identified, our job development team would work with an individual to do things like interview preparation, LinkedIn searching. Um, once an individual did secure work, uh, they would get paired with a job coach and there would be on-site training, off-site training, um, but it was really, a lot of our programming was, was really about face-to-face, one-on-one work. We also have a major project which Eric leads, which is our Amazon program, that places right now about 10 to 12 individuals per month into employment. And I'll let Eric talk a lot more about that programming, but as I said, much of what we did was one-to-one -one in person. So mm -hmm. when the COVID epidemic broke out and shelter in place went in, uh, that had to change. And it has been truly remarkable how the team members in employment services have risen to that occasion. So right away, um, individuals were able to pivot to do remote support. So that includes check-ins on the phone, um, Zoom calls, one of, one of the... Um, coach's name, Ngozi, she actually does this very active Zoom call with, I believe, 14 participants every day. Um, Ooh. <laughs> and that, that was an interesting challenge, but I think the, one of the bigger challenges was actually how do we do um, what we called assessments or simulations? How do we get to know an individual and their skills very, very well? And the team was able to actually start Google Classrooms that incorporate Zoom and actually incorporate video games. So one of um, one of the team members is actually a video game designer and has created video games that simulate different job sites um, to allow people the opportunity to experience it virtually before they go on site. So really, really cool to see how that has changed. Um, but with that said, our services in employment are essential services. So we have had individuals that have stayed in the field. So some of uh, the participants we work with have continued needing to go into their job every day because they're an essential service and our coaches have risen to the occasion to be there beside them. Eric, um, what challenges have you as a services manager uh, faced in dealing with your uh, clients or what is the best way to say the people who work for you? So or the, the, you have out in the, field. the participants, or as I call them, my customers. What, is, what have been the biggest challenges your customers have faced uh, during this, and how, how do you deal effectively with them? So just the, the, one of the immediate uh, results of this are a lot of people were sent home uh, from work. They, people, luckily, in the very beginning, a lot of our employers put people on, just told them to go home and kept paying them. Um, some people did end up going out on furlough and a couple few people have lost their jobs. But one of the first things was everybody had to go home and a change of routine is, is I was not comfortable with my change of routine. And so for those individuals that stayed home, just keeping them engaged. Um, luckily I work for the ARC, which is just a bucket of resources. Um, one of the resources that we used is within two weeks, um, the, we have some really smart computer people at work that are up in high level, and they came up with something that's called the hub. And that is hmm. something I want to share with you guys today. And I please do share this with all your friends. So just keeping them engaged while this was happening, um, keeping my coaches engaged while this was happening. Everybody was going home scared and nervous and not sure what was going to happen. So uh, keeping my coaches engaged helped keep my clients engaged. Um, and we didn't have a lot 
of things to do. So we did come up with different kinds of tasks and assessments. Um, we did a lot of um, ISP building during that time. You know, maybe somebody had their ISP three months ago, but now we're working on a, with, with the regional centers and everybody, there's a new kind of form. It's more person-centered, social workers have to do it, and we're doing it. Um, and so we were able to, you know, punch out a bunch of these ISPs, not changing goals or anything like that, but getting the new forms and getting everybody uh, used to the new forms. Um, so it was, that was one of the challenges in the beginning, just the challenges of uncertainty and keeping people engaged. That is still a challenge because we are finding out some of the employers, it's a good challenge though. Some of our employers are keeping people on for m several more months and paying them full paychecks. We have mm -hmm. really good partners over at Salesforce and with the Facebook ABM people. So, so just trying to keep those groups engaged. Um, we also know that a lot of people returning to work, there are uh, going to be a bunch of changes in what their procedures are. In order to preserve their job, me and Krista and other team members have been proactively engaging with our partners to, you know, lack of better purpose uh, words and stuff, carve out a COVID job for us, you know, working on, on cleaning things more, uh, whereas we were, you know, re replenishing office supplies. There's no office supplies. So working with our partners to be able to have something for people to return to. And while we're doing that, training remotely like this, some of these new roles and what some of the new tasks are and having meetings with everybody. Excellent. Eric, one of uh, your major uh, employers, Amazon, has had a rather um, mixed, at best, uh, reputation for how it treats its warehouse employees in good times. And now, uh, under the COVID pandemic, uh, I've heard some additional problems that may result. What are your thoughts about that? Or have you had any interactions with them uh, regarding those concerns? Yeah, and I'll give you a little bit of history about when I came on to this account. I was I was asked if I wanted to job coach during the pilot program out of Amazon, and this was back in 2016. I said I would have to think about it, and I went home and I did my research, and because I too had seen a lot of, you know, unfavorable things about Amazon, and that was four years ago. Uh, when I looked online and did my research, I found that a lot of those things I heard were true. But I had also seen that through mitigation and things like that, mm -hmm. that they cleaned up their act. They were no longer um, exposing people to uh, temperatures and things that were, that were really challenging. Um, and I know that there's other things about, you know, up in the bigger offices, maybe people aren't nice to each other. Um, so when I finally, I, I saw that things were cleaned up a little bit and I saw the importance of if somebody's gonna start this program, I want it to be the ARC because we can go in and we can take care of them. Um, you know, the ARC is a really good agency and we do, that's why I work here. Um, we do what we say we're gonna do. So that being said, I wanted, if anybody was gonna go in there and do this, I wanted it to be the ARC. So I did the pilot program and I went out there and when I was out there, I met the nicest people. I also met some, you know, grumpy people too, but that's, you know, you know to take a look around, you know, that happens. That's what makes us all, human and everything so so there were all sorts of humans there and and it was a very mixed group of 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 you know cultural backgrounds religions different sizes shapes colors languages it was like being in the ark um, you know the, the boat ark um, it was, <laughs> everybody was in there and for the most part people were really nice 
Um, the leaders at that time were really nice. Um, so, you know, we went full steam with this. That being said, there are some managers that are a little bit on the grumpy side or don't do things, you know, that we would consider nice. Um, mm -hmm. But that's the way employers are sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but Amazon as a whole, when I raise certain challenges, they really get addressed. Um, and so, and so like with this COVID thing, when the COVID thing happened, everybody thought that I even thought, what, we've got some hot boxes out there. And we were really, really concerned, which is why we, and luckily Amazon told everybody you can stay home. It was like, I think it was like six weeks. You don't have to come to work and we won't let you go. So people got to choose to stay home. And so a bunch of people did. There were some people that still wanted to go to work. And Amazon was scrambling. Um, it, I believe they were scrambling so that their employees stayed healthy. That is, you know, yes, healthy employees can get my mom her package. So, yeah, yep. So, you know, but they did want to make sure everybody stayed healthy. So they started implementing as fast as possible mm -hmm. as many safety procedures that they could. And I can say now that, that it did work. And, you know, because people were wearing masks, they changed how people were walking indoors. Um, you know, Amazon, obviously, the more they put out, the more they make, but they cut their, their, um, the size of their personnel at the big site by more than half. So, so you know, they were making half the amount of money, but they were still staying safe. So there's a lot of things. It's a huge business. Um, so you're going to have some sites that are uh, more favorable and then some that aren't. But part of my job, my major part of my job is, is partnering up with these site leaders and with site HRs and teaching them what I do. I teach them my passion and mm -hmm. we educate them on what we're doing. Um, Amazon's got a big, you know, has binders of, of things to help their staff and to help my staff. So Amazon actually, to start this program, they hired an executive director of an agency like the ARCs in the Midwest. And he, but he had big financial companies, that's what executive directors have to do. And they brought him on board to run this program. So they didn't go from the outside and try to carve something out on the inside. They brought somebody I would consider from our inside, mm. guide them through this process. And every step of this process, they have people helping them work this out because they got the right leader out there for this program. Will, do you have any questions uh, for Eric at this point? Um, sure, I do. Um, how, how have you been helping students through this pandemic? So, well, we've been calling them. I have the coaches call them. Um, they, they do meetings with them. They fill out questionnaires with them. Um, they even use the, the thing that I was talking about earlier called the hub. I would, I highly recommend you look at this webpage and you give it to your friends and your friends' friends and you blast it out places because this has a lot of information. Yeah, it says the arc on it, but there is a lot of information that deals with well, specifically COVID stuff and the shelter in place stuff, but there's a lot of other things too. There's, there's, there's Zumba classes, there's cooking classes. Um, these are all things that you can do on your own. Um, this is a really, I'm really proud of, the, of my employers for making this website. It's, 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 it's kind of off the hook. So it's really cool. There's a lot of information on there. And like I said, we, we also, you know, we have at the ARC, we have, we don't just have the employment department, we have day program and we have residential and we have all these different programs. And so the day program, we have a lot of people in the day program that didn't have a job and didn't maybe necessarily, their, uh, a job wasn't their goal. Um, maybe their goal was to, you know, be with their friends. That's not happening. That's hardcore. So, um, I mean, it's one thing 
it's a bummer when you can't go to work and you can't see your friends, but that, if that's like where your, where your, your life is, is in your, is in the program, which a lot of people's are, I mean, my life is my work. So a lot of people's lives are what they're doing and they're involved in. And the ARC has a lot of people that we serve for like, what we, you know, day program. They had nothing. And so the, a lot of the day program staff and managers are having these Zoom meetings. I know in the employment department, we have what's called the brown bag lunch. Um, and that's on Mondays where a bunch of employment people get together and talk about jobs. And, and um, so we even have like a, you know, a live or a, a virtual job club. Um, but as Matthew's scrolling up on this page, you, you can see all the different things and i really i really recommend you all, there's so much to look at we couldn't even look at it all right now so please look at this and see the different things there's so many things i haven't even been able to see all of it so but i've been shooting it out to a couple friends and i get some people that we are working in this field and other places and i'm like encouraging everybody i'm giving this to social workers this web link um because the, the, the arc stepped up with this one. There's not, this is, this is really cool. It certainly looks like, and thank you very, very much, Eric. Does it look like your program is sustainable for the long haul? Will you be able to maintain this for however long it, uh, the current situation, as I call it, the COVID-19 pandemic last? Or do you see it ending by some reason or another? Uh, the ARC has gotten a lot of support both from the state and our regional center to continue our programming. Um, so financially, the ARC is in a very stable situation. We actually had a executive director come in about two years ago that really developed a strong ARC and he did just leave, um, but he has been replaced with an interim director, Kristen, who has been with the ARC for seven or eight years. Uh, and both of them have just made this a very strong operation. With that said, we do have support uh, from a lot of our employer partners. So as Eric mentioned, this book kept our participants employed and Amazon is hiring more than ever. <laughs> um, it's also been very interesting to see how the team is being more proactive in this. So we are actually going to employer partners and saying, look, we've really analyzed what the future of work is going to look like, and we believe that you're going to need new roles. We believe you're going to need to hire more people to support your offices. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we are here to support you in that. So we not only see um, stability in this time, however long it, it may last, but we actually do see a great opportunity for growth. Excellent. Something I should have asked before. Um, do your employers uh, ever hire people remotely? Are any of your uh, and Eric's customers uh, working remotely as opposed to, you say a lot of them are essential workers and need to be on site? Uh, so we definitely have a mix within uh, the current pool right now. And of course we have more employers and people looking for employment that is remote. Uh, I would say prior to shelter in place, we did not have any workers. But since then, we have had individuals whose positions have changed to completely remote, and they've been able to do, you know, the the nine to five, all the responsibilities they were doing before. Those are, of course, uh, individuals more in our tech roles. Um, that is interesting. I'm not actually sure how that's going to change in the future of course data entry has always been a big opportunity um positions in tech have just been growing and growing we are becoming mm -hmm. a much more virtual world i know i would love to see us in terms of virtuality get get much more into gaming um i know we have a lot of individuals that we've worked with and a lot of people on the staff who are very very interested in that industry so um, if anyone out there has got connections and is looking for a great group of uh, employees, we are definitely interested in that. And, and I'm ready to lead. 